hello again. Dave Hill coming at you for your next lesson. And I hope you've been enjoying yourself and having a good time and learning a lot about music and the guitar. So um, notice my Les Paul here today. You might have seen me play this in some of my other uh, music examples. This is my 1976 Urgandy beauty here. But uh, I like to mix it up and play different guitars for these different lessons. Okay, so let's talk about some basics uh, of counting today. Uh, the reason I want to go over this, and by no means is this going to be all there is to know about music counting and music notation. However, I have to be able to talk about a few of these things and teach them in the beginning because I have to be able to write notation down as I teach the lessons. So you're still going to want to consult a good music reading book to, to further enhance your studies here. But let's just talk about a few basics of counting so that you can follow along with me when I write charts up. Okay, you might often see in standard notation, uh, next to the treble clef right here, you might see this uh, a fraction looking number. Okay, it, it might say 4-4, four, four, it might say 6-8, in this case it's 4-4. Four, four. And that is a, a time signature, and that time signature is telling you information about what the notes are going to represent and what value they're going to represent. Okay. The most common time signature that you see in music, it's not the only one, that, but the most common time signature is indeed 4-4, four, four. okay? And that's also some, sometimes referred to as common time. You might actually see on a, on a um, staff the C written to represent 4-4, four, four. okay? But in this case, I wrote it as 4-4. Four, four. Okay, so what that means is two things. It means that there's four beats in a measure, the bottom note means there's four beats in a measure. I'm sorry. I have to make a, I have to make a cut there because I made a mistake. <laughs> okay. Okay, so the most common time signature is 4-4. Four, four. It's not the only time signature, but it's one of the most common time signatures. And you might often see 4-4 four, four written as a C, like it is on this tablet or staff. Imagine if this was just notation, it would be C. So you'd have it right, right here. Okay, and then the number 4-4 four, four represents two pieces of information. It represents how many beats are in a measure and what note receives the beat. Okay, so in this case, the bottom number represent what note, what value note is the beat. Okay, so in 4-4 four, four time, the bottom note is the quarter note, saying that the quarter note receives the beat. In other words, if you tap your foot, the quarter note is the beat right there. That's one, two, three, four. That's the note that's receiving the beat, okay? And the top note tells you how many beats are in the measure. So in four, four, there's four quarter notes per measure. So that's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so when someone counts in, a lot of times they, they count in a measure of 4-4. Four, four, they'll say, okay, here we go, one, two, three, four, and then they begin to play. Okay, so um, there's other time signatures we're going to talk about where the bottom note is an 8, or maybe the bottom note, you know, is a 12, but we're going to talk about for a while 4-4 four, four time. So we're going to, I wanted to introduce some basic concepts of 4-4 four, four time. Okay, so let's look at what a quarter note looks like in standard notation. You'll notice that, first of all, you have a note head. It's, these note heads probably could be a little bit bigger, probably better like this. Okay, that looks a little better. And there's a stem that goes vertically up, okay? Um, they can also go down when, they, when, they, when the note heads go over the B line and the stems will go down. But basically, there's, a, there's an oval note head and then there's a stem. And this represents the value of a quarter note. So in this case, if I were actually going to read the pitch of those notes, it's simply going to be an A in quarter notes. It's just going to sound like this. Man, that's an incredible melody, isn't it? I thought of that myself. That's just a beautiful melody. Okay, well, I'm being silly, but the point, point is, it's just to show you that that's how it would look if you were going to play that melody. It's four beats per measure, and I'm playing an A note, and okay, and that's what it would sound like, okay? 
Now, what happens when you want to get in between the quarter note, right? I don't want to write music that just sounds like this. I mean, what's the point of that? That sounds kind of goofy, right? I want to write something that has some upbeats in there. The upbeats are the, the opposite side of the downbeat, okay? So if this is the downbeat, the upbeat is right here. Oops, let me just turn that off. So there's the downbeat now, and then there's the upbeat, and you have this. And those are called eighth notes. One and two and three and four and. Okay? So they fit in between. The, they, they start on the downbeat, and then they go on the upbeat in between. Right? So that's what they look like over here. I've, I've made the note heads, but now I've written the upbeat in between, and I've connected them together with a beam. So now we have eighth notes like this. And eighth notes are very common in a lot of music. You could hear an eighth note rhythm that sounds like rock and roll. Very common in, in rock and roll music and a lot of music is just steady eighth notes. Okay, but notice now they have um, if you were going to write one single eighth note by itself, it would actually look like um, it would look like this. I'm going to write, erase something here. Just a single eighth note. Let's say an upbeat eighth note would would be the note note head, and then you'd have the little flag off the side here. But when you put two of them together like this, you don't go like this. That's not right. That's not right at all. You connect them like this. Okay, so now we can mix quarter notes and we can mix eighth notes together. And so if I were going to play this with a single note, my beautiful single note melody that I just came up with, it's going to sound simply like this. And then eighth notes. And then quarter notes mixed with eighth notes. Okay, so it's really, I'm only showing you this to give you some insight into the basics of rhythm and counting. Okay, there's a lot more to it than this, but it's going to help us understand some of the charts and simple uh, examples I'm, I'm going to write on the board. Okay, so you can see right here what I've written, how, how it works out. There's four beats and four four per measure, one, two, three, four. And when you count the eighth notes, uh, you don't count each individual eighth note, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, like I've written right here. But it does help you understand why they're called eighth notes, because indeed, there's eight of them in a bar of four, four. Okay, but what you really do is you count the downbeats, one, two, three, four, and on the upbeats, you just count and. So you go one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. So the downbeats are always represented by numbers, and the upbeats are always represented by amps. Okay? So that's a good way to think of that so you keep that straight. So there's the basics of rhythm and counting, and we're going to expand on that information in other lessons. All right, I'm going to talk to you about uh, some other important matters. As long as you guys are faithfully coming on to these lessons and you're learning a lot, and I know you are, um, I want to talk to you about uh, getting the most out of your practicing, okay? And I'll talk to you a little bit about how to practice. Okay, so if you've been looking at our lessons and, and following along and everything, you're probably getting a lot of information that you want to keep track of and you want to continue to get better at. Okay, that's great, but sometimes what happens is when you get a lot of information and you get a, a lot of inspiration, you want to practice, you get all this great stuff that you want to learn, but you don't know how to organize it. And sometimes what happens is you don't really get efficient practicing uh, done because you, you're not organized about your practicing, okay? So what I want you to start thinking about with everything that you're, you're working on with these lessons is maybe do a couple of things for me. Keep, keep a notebook of what you're learning and, keep, and, and write it down with each lesson, okay? Write lesson one and write down the concepts as you've learned them. In your, in your music notebook. So you can always go back, first of all, and review. Okay, that's very important. You can review each lesson um, and 
figure out what, what was discussed in those lessons and uh, go back and review and learn and study from the previous lessons. And it also gives you an idea of how to organize your practice sessions. You might find after you get three or four lessons into it that you haven't learned maybe the root locations as well as you could, mm -hmm. okay? So you want to go back and review and you can see by looking at your notebooks what you've covered already. So what you want to start doing is keeping track of what you need to practice each time you have a practice session, okay? You want to spend some time reviewing old material and reviewing some of the, the stuff we've already covered to make sure that you've learned it properly and you're getting better at it. And then you want to take some time to uh, uh, look at new material that we're going to cover in the next lesson, maybe a lesson that you just, rev that you just learned, that you just uh, went to your computer and, and watched, okay? So you want to take new material and apply it and, and also connect it to some of the old material that you've already practiced, okay? And you want to do this in a routine that makes sense to you. You want to find a good place to practice. You want to have all your tools available. You want to have a quiet place that you can practice without distractions, okay? Uh, it's hard to practice very effectively when there's, you know, 10 other people in the room watching TV and making noise and playing video games, right? You want to be able to be in a place where you can really concentrate and get some work done, okay? You want to have fun with it, of course, but, you know, you got to be able to focus on what you're doing. So make sure you have a nice little dedicated practice area that you can devote to your music because that's how you get the most out of it. When I was up.